Happy Sunshine family. Lunacy's back with part four of the transcript where Heather presents her price of pay. We are on page 47. And actually, we finished page 47. We made it through the end of that. We're on page 48. The judge is asking, where is the Bank for International Settlements? Who is that? Heather replies, the Bank for International Settlements is the central bank for all the central banks, or it was. Where is that? Asked the judge. That's in Switzerland. Judge starts up. So Switzerland owns, Heather cuts him off with a no. Okay, says the judge. Who owns the Federal Reserve Bank and the FDIC and all the other banks? Well, the FDIC is closed. It's only open. All these corporations only exist as a matter of bookkeeping only. Interesting, interesting statement. Okay, says the judge. Ledgering, says Heather. C. Clifford Shirley Jr. asks, So who owns the Federal Reserve Bank? The Federal Reserve Bank, asks Heather. Yes, ma'am. Everyone on the planet owns it equally. Okay, and so, starts the judge, pursuant to those filings, Heather cuts him off, and I understand that your filings said that each person was entitled to $6 billion as a result of that filing, is that right? No, it's not, replies Heather. It's not, says the judge. No, it's stated incorrectly. Oh, says the judge. Heather says everyone. Everyone's state of body, which would be their actual, their bodies. And those are under the ownership and care of each individual. As far as the five billion, according to the commercial bill and the true bill, there is five billion in pre- the court reporter says, I'm sorry, pre-19 question mark. Heather says, sorry, pre-1933 gold and silver, which is the lawful money or was the lawful money of the United States. And that's what was duly secured, registered, and noticed. The judge says, so what I'm, Heather continues, So it's actually $10 billion for every prejudice since March 13th, 2013. Excuse me, March 18th, 2013. Every prejudice done towards you, towards anyone, that includes having you sit on a bench, serving a private interest other than doing the job that you truly have believed that you have been doing this entire time, It's 10 billion ledgered each time, which is why the economies are in the state they are. It's actually ledgered through the Bank of International Settlements, or BIS. Okay, says the judge. So every every one of us in this courtroom is entitled to $10 billion? I'm not sure what your accounts are at this time, says Heather. Like I gave you, at least, says the judge. I gave you an example of what just this case, these alleged cases alone. Judge says, I'm looking at your filing. I'm looking at your filing back in 2012. Heather says, yeah, 
That was notice and security for every single being on this planet. Judge says, right, have you? Heather continues, that's when there's a prejudice. Judge says, have you gone and gotten yours, your five billion? <clears throat> Heather says, everything is ledgered over to Bank of International Settlements. So, yes. And I was actually given the... I was until I was threatened and said I could only use mine and a small group of my friends. But they didn't want the word out to anyone else because too many people were... Judge cuts her off. So you've gotten yours, but nobody else can get? Heather cuts her off. No, I rejected everything. Judge says, we don't. Heather cuts her off, cuts him off. I rejected everything. If everyone is to have access to their accounts, you have accounts. And then she gets cut off. That was magnanimous of you to give up your five billion because everybody else couldn't get it, huh? Heather says, I have much more. These are ledgered accounts. And I know that you're making fun of things right now, but I'm being very, very serious right now. And I spent 20 years of my life to make sure the fraud and slavery stopped. Wow, that's a, uh, that's a powerful right here. Page 51, lines 5 through 7. Actually, lines three through seven. I have much more. These are ledgered accounts. And I know that you're making fun of things right now, but I'm being very, very serious right now. And I spent 20 years of my life to make sure the fraud and slavery stopped. The judge says, I was interested to see if there was anything to your argument. And that's why I asked you the 40 questions before this. Heather says, I don't have argument. Judge says, because once you... Heather's, they're both talking over the top of each other. She says, I have declaration. Judge says, once you have no concept of the law in my mind, then all this other stuff has no moment and no merit. I wanted to see if you would agree with the basic principles of law and the statute and the Constitution. And if you did, then I would have to say, quote, wow, maybe I ought to look at this, end quote. But once I heard you say that, you know, all the things you said, then it pretty well confirmed to me. And here's why. Let me, Heather cuts him off. I'm sorry. I didn't understand that last piece. Could you repeat it? No, says the judge. Did you? Let me ask you this. Maybe this will help you. Did you study the UCC law in school? Yes, I did, replies Heather. Judge says, and are you aware then that the UCC is not a law? Heather says, the UCC, as I stated earlier, the United States Commercial Code. Judge says, right. Heather continues, is just a regulation of uniform registration system, a notification system. That's what it is. Judge says, my point is, it doesn't exist. You understand that. Heather says, United States Commercial Code does not exist? Question mark. Judge says, it's not called the United States Commercial Code, is it? Heather says, the UCC that you're referring to in the notification system? Uh-huh, right, replies the judge. Or the actual regulations, which one are you speaking of? Judge says, I'm talking about the UCC that you have referenced throughout every document that you have filed. You are aware that that is not a law. That is a group of people who got together and put together a proposed set of uniform laws that the various states of the United States might choose to adopt so that we might have some uniformity between states. And each state, like Tennessee, adopts its own version of the UCC and changes whatever terms it wants to, so that each state has its own version of the UCC, but there is no law, per se, called 
the UCC. Heather says, I'm aware of that. Judd says, okay, so Heather continues, UCC is a notification system or was a notification system. Judge says, no, each state has a version of the UCC within a notification system, correct? There is no UCC notification system, is there? Heather says, then what are the actual filings that they are doing? That is them filing whatever property or claims that they believe that they have or positions that they have. It is a... It was a notification system, and each state, I agree with you, each state had its own versions that they've adopted and that they've used. Okay, said the judge. Heather says, that is absolutely correct as to, the judge cuts her off. So what you just referenced, the UCC and a number like UCC 301, there's no such thing. There's a proposal for a Section 301, but there's no law. There's no UCC 301, is there? Heather says, there's going to be a lot of bankers, and even your court clerk is going to be very upset to hear that because everything that you guys do is entered into the, or was entered into the UCC. Judge says, nothing I do. No, ma'am, nothing I do is entered into the UCC, nothing, because it doesn't exist. If you would cite me, Heather says, I agree with you that it, judge continues, to a statute where it exists, I will look it up and we will show everybody. Heather says, is that the United States, is that a United States code? Judge says, yeah. Well, this has the code at the back. Yeah, where is it? It's not in there. It was put together by a group of of private groups like the American Law Institute. You know that. You learned that in law school. I did, says Heather. I've had to work with. Judge says, you just made this stuff up. There is no UCC 301. Heather says, no, I didn't make it up. Judge says, there's no UCC 103, is there? I did not make anything up, says Heather. These are actually common law, common law principles. Judge says, so here we have, Heather continues, the UCC is utilized by every single system and function from the U.S. corporation when it was in a function of a corporation. Now there is no corporation. What I'm saying is, everything goes forward exactly as we all designed. Judge says, so here we have the Tennessee version. Of what? I'm sorry, I can't see that far. The judge says, of the commercial transactions. And there's a 47-3-301, because that's how Tennessee chose to codify. Heather says... Everyone, which is why in the filings that we've, that I've handed forward, the actual declaration of facts, which came up to judgment due to non-rebuttal, it actually states that all national and international equivalents, the judge cuts her off. Your whole basis, Heather continues, all state and international equivalent. So it's whatever equivalent Tennessee would have to that particular recording. They've all been honored there. Judge says, my point is, you don't understand they're all different. Heather says, that's why the filings are written the way they are. United States federal government, United States of, and any and all international and universal equivalents. It's the same thing. Judge says, and the whole basis, like I'm looking at your financing statement. Heather says, so your Tennessee code you just referenced there had been included because of the actual language. Okay, says the judge. Heather continues. And again, I, at this point, as far as I still have not received while we've been sitting here for however long, These amounts that are being ledgered, everyone's had notice of them. All right, says the judge. All of that, continues Heather, what I'm asking from you is, 
do you have for me because I'd be more than willing to accept it at this point. So I'm going to ask for the final time because it's already been asked in writing quite a few times. Do you see Clifford Shirley and Anne Marie Svalto and Cynthia Davidson and Parker Still? Because he was included in that as well as well as the alleged court clerk and her deputies, do you have for me today any sworn documentation validating and verifying your authority, your identification, your authorization from the actual United States? The judge cuts her off. Number one, Heather continues, For me to go forward and prove in validation, verification that the laws you are claiming that myself and Mr. Bean have violated are actually lawful, do you have that for me from Jeff Sessions? Court says, I do not have that for you from Jeff Sessions. Thank you, says Heather. Number one, says the judge. Number two, you are not entitled to that. Under what basis, asks Heather. Number three, even if I produced it, you wouldn't accept it. You just said it. I did not, says Heather. Yes, you did, said the judge. Heather says, I said that I... Judge says, when I said... Heather says, I started out that way. I'm more than willing to accept anything that you have for me to review. All right, says the judge. For acceptance and rejection, continues Heather. So you're telling me that you don't have it? Excuse me, excuse me, the court reporter says. Yes, says Heather. For the acceptance of what? Asks the court reporter. Heather says, sorry, for acceptance to review. I would accept it to review. For acceptance of rejection? I don't know what's going to be handed to me. All right, says the judge. Heather continues, but I'm more than willing to receive, to accept whatever you're going to hand me for further review, for acceptance, eventual acceptance or rejection, depending on what you give me. C. Clifford Shirley asks, or he just says, I have determined that based on what you've said that my official and formal appointment from the United States government would not be acceptable to you because you've said it doesn't exist. I don't exist. Heather replies, if you want to hand it to me and judge says no. Heather continues with your signature and everything. I will definitely look at it. The judge says, no, I don't have to do that. Heather says, I've asked for that. I've asked you for that, is what she says. Judge says, I understand that. Heather continues, you have not provided it to me ever, so I'm asking you for it. And now you are refusing to give it to me? Question mark. Judge says, I don't have to give it to you, nor do I have any signature from Jeff Sessions nor his fingerprints, nor his biometric seal. Heather says, you asked me earlier, so now your judge cuts her off. I do not have it. Heather says, you're making fun of me. I am just saying at this point, I do not have anything from you. I would be more than willing to look at. I've never seen your appointments. I don't know what Tennessee looks like. If you want to hand that to me, that would be great. Anne-Marie Sfalto, Cynthia Davidson. Reporter says, I need you to slow down. I cannot type that fast. Heather says, I apologize. Judge says, when the record, listen, when the record isn't accurate in your mind, it will be because you were repeatedly advised to slow down and you wouldn't. I just want that on the record, says the judge. It, this, is really, this is really interesting here. 
uh, my understanding of how the court reporter operates is she is making an audio tape recording or there's some uh, there's somebody in charge of recording making a uh, uh, an electronic recording an audible recording of these proceedings that uh, the reporter can refer back to and listen to uh, and use that in conjunction with the notes that they are typing in their shorthand version <clears throat> to generate this transcript that we're reading here. Let's see. Let's get through the end of page 59 here. So Heather says, I'm not trying to intentionally upset you or to even speak fast. It is just a natural flow for me. So I will consciously make sure that I maintain a pace that you can record. So my apologies for any inconvenience. Judge says, now you filed copies of the indictment and copies of the government's response to those. And you marked all over those that they were basically void. Is that right? And that you... Heather says, which document are re you referring to? Are you speaking to me or to Mr. Bean? To you, says the judge. Let's see. What are those documents? 48 and I think 49 and 53. Do you recognize that? You came and filed those the other day. If you'll look up here. All right. Well, this gets really interesting. <clears throat> I really, I really like what Heather said right here. Where are we on page 56, lines 11 through 20? I think this is what I'm going to close out with. Heather says, all of that, what I'm asking from you is do you have for me because i'd be more than willing to accept it at this point so i'm going to ask for the final time because it's already been asked in writing quite a few times do you see clifford shirley and Anne marie sfalto and cynthia davidson and parker still because he was included in that as well as well as the alleged court clerk and her deputies do you have for me today any sworn documentation validating and verifying your authority, your identification, your authorization from the actual United States? What a potent question. Putting them right on the spot. Requesting it. And as we saw, a refusal a refusal to a refusal to see the observations that Heather is putting forth for everybody to see, the whole world to see. When I listened to a recent conversation between Heather and BZ, it was interesting to hear that uh she says, this is, the way it, this is the way it goes. This is the way it went before, and, and it's the same thing this time. So it, it sounds like she has been through the courts with this, uh, with this message at least one time before. And I'm wondering if anybody out there has any information on which courts that might be. Okay, thank you so much for all of your emails and the comments down below. Got quite a few people that do not consent to the way the system is treating us. And what Heather is offering is an observation for everyone that, hey, there is a way to move forward that we can all get on board with. And it's actually already started. It started years ago. And 
this appears to be just the very public notification of the courts in the Eastern District of Tennessee uh, that, that they're done. So we're going to find out just who they all are. And the alleged court clerk, that would be Deborah C. Poplin. She is slated to replace C. Clifford Shirley Jr. upon his retirement. And the court clerk's deputies, one of those would be Angela Brush, who is the alleged deputy clerk who signed the warrants for arrest for Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe and Randall K. Bean. And we've had a lot of questions about those warrants. If you got any email for me, send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E at protonmail.com. I love getting your love, light, and links. And we'll be back soon with the next installment of this. Peace out. Bye-bye.